Hello, ladies. Welcome to episode 26. In this episode, I'm going to talk about starting over after divorce. Before we get started, though, I want to offer you a free gift that I am super excited about. Now that the world is opening up and COVID-19 is sort of on the downward uh, trend, people are getting out there, we're able to gather again. I have put together a list of 101 places that you can meet a high quality potential partner. Now the list is tested. Like I have used this with my clients. In fact, one of my clients who just started getting out there again, we went over this list last night and looked at all 101 places. And I said, hey, I want you to choose the ones that you would actually go to. And I think she got right up to right around 30 plus places that she was sure that she could get out to and activities that she could participate in right away. Now, there were a couple she was like, well, I might have to work my way up to some of these, but there was at least 30 that she felt like she could do this week. So I promise you this list is amazing. If you're tired of the dating apps or you need a break or you just want to up-level your dating strategy, I want you to download this list of 101 places to meet high quality potential partners. So the list is free. It's my free gift to you. It is a PDF download that you get instantly. You can access this list in the show notes. The link will be in the show notes, or you can go to shadecurry.com and just pop your email into the uh, the pop-up that comes up, inviting you to join my email list and download the PDF right away. So do that today. I promise you, this is not one of those lists that you're going to go through and be like, ah, no one wants to do that. That's weird. Listen, I don't even have bars on this list, right? Don't have bars on this list. So it's a high quality list. I promise you it works. These are some of the same places that I went to when I was dating. And even if you're not looking to meet someone right away, these activities are just fun in and of themselves. So grab a girlfriend and get out there. Okay, so let's talk about starting over after divorce. Looking back five years ago when I was starting out after divorce, I really couldn't have predicted where I am today. I know where I am today is where I wanted to be. Like I have achieved all of the things that I defined as what it would look like to have recovered from my divorce. So I have um, financially stable again. I'm running my own business, which I enjoy. My children are thriving and I am remarried, happily remarried. And those are the things that really um, defined that time for me, things that I felt like were really pain points uh, during the divorce, right after the divorce these areas were really, really painful for me. And I think I would add my health also just because I was going through so much stress in my body. Um, I was experiencing panic attacks and a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress. Um, I had back aches and heart palpitations, all of the things. So yes, I'll add my health and I have recovered my health also at this point. So looking back, I wanted to share for those of you who are still early in your divorce or your, you know, the divorce is over and you're wondering, how do I get my life back together? How do I start over again? And you might be experiencing a lot of thoughts, you know, around your best years being gone. I remember thinking that. I remember thinking um, that I wouldn't have friends again, like I wouldn't meet someone who wanted an older woman, which is how I saw myself at age 40. Um, my ex and I separated at 39. So I was really working on rebuilding my life right around age 40, you know, that I was damaged goods, that I was too old. And that thinking was the initial thinking that my brain offered me. And I know I've said this over and over, our brains are just designed to go to the worst case scenario. They're designed to sit in negativity bias. They're designed to keep you from trying new things or going out there. 
And if you buy into those default thoughts that your brain offers you, you end up feeling really stuck. Like you're just full of regret. You keep recycling the thoughts of regret. Why did I marry this person? How is this my life? How did I get there? It keeps you in a lot of uncertainty. Like, I don't know where to start. Where do I start from? right? All those feelings of being inadequate, not good enough, overwhelmed. And sometimes you have people in your life who add to this, right? There's sometimes, not everyone has this. I know there were some people in my life who were super supportive and encouraging. There were some who were not. I know some divorced women who have like a really amazing community of people who are supportive around them and they are blessed in that way. And I know some people who are just like surrounded by people who knock them down and and always are you know, poking at their insecurities or poking at the areas in their life where things are not great. Whatever your situation is, what matters most is how you are thinking about where you are. Your thoughts will create the results you eventually get. And it is the thoughts that you pay attention to that your brain will give energy to. So there's a saying, energy flows where your attention goes. We all have negative thoughts. We all have uh, positive thoughts, negative thoughts. All of those thoughts are always there, but it's the ones that you latch onto. It's the ones you pay attention to that determine where your effort will go. So when I first started out again, after a divorce, I had a lot of the same negative thoughts and they created a lot of regret for me, a lot of feelings of despair, a lot of anger. I found myself escaping a lot, venting a lot, right? And so for some of you, depending on what your escape or action of choice from that negative place is, you might find yourself like spiraling into negative feelings, scrolling a lot on social media, getting on dating apps just to see what's out there or just to distract yourself from the loneliness or the pain. You might binge watch TV, drink, overwork, overthink, right? You might find yourself just recreating over and over that feeling of being stuck. You might find yourself procrastinating on things that you want to do. And when you give attention to the negative thoughts, when you give attention to the thoughts of being stuck What happens is that you don't get started on starting over. You don't set goals. You don't get started on the goals. You don't work on your transformation journey. Or you might think, well, I need to spend time with my kids, but because you're caught in the spiral of overthinking, you're not spending quality time with your kids. You're not paying attention to what your kids need because you're just so caught up in all of the negativity of starting over and how am I going to do it? And it's not going to work for me and all of those thoughts. So I want you to this week, really sit down and become aware of how you are thinking and how what you're thinking, how that's affecting your journey to start over, your journey to rebuild your life. And you might tell yourself, I am starting over, I am building over, but how uh, effective are you being in getting the results you want? Are you achieving those baby step results that move you forward? Are you actually getting anything done or are you recycling the thoughts over and over in your head? The real problem when you're starting over is not your age. It's not your situation. It's not whether or not you have any money or not. It's not um, like what your circumstances are. It's not actually the scenario or the situation that you are in. The real problem and the real solution is going to be your thinking. So when I started out over, um, I, I actually was the one who had to leave the marital house. Well, I didn't have to leave. I left because it was unsafe, but that's a whole other story. So I ended up leaving and couldn't return. The court uh, never did give me the opportunity to return with the kids. So the kids and I actually left the house and my ex had the whole big old house to himself. But that's, that's like drama from the past, right? So I ended up having to find a place even though I didn't have access to our finances or the marital funds, I ended up having to find a place while having no money, which was like, you know, you can imagine a really, really stressful situation to be in. So I had situations like that with money for sure. I had the kids. So, you know, thinking about dating again or 
finding someone again was just not a real possibility at the time. I had been a stay at home mom for a really long time. So thinking about getting back to work was like, wait, how is this going to happen? What exactly is going to happen here? And then I thought I looked at my age and I'd been married since I was 21 and I was 39. And it was just like, oh my God, like did the last like 20 something years just go by? And here I am and trying to figure out how to start over. And so what I did, thanks to my coach at the time, was really start to shape my thinking in a way that served me rather than looking at my circumstances and deciding that I couldn't do it. And one of the thinking patterns or the thoughts that served me that I want to share with you was I I sat down and sort of did a process of thinking what is actually available to me based on my age. And I went back to when I was, I guess, like the happiest, most hopeful time in my, you know, recent adulthood would have been right around when I was 19. So I was single at the time and I felt like I knew what I wanted to do with my life, et cetera, et cetera. But that was also the time I started dating and that led down the path of marriage and divorce. So, uh, but I went right back to that moment when I was 19, when I was sort of planning the way I wanted my life to go. And I thought to myself, if I was 19 again, what are the choices that I would make different from the choices that I did make? And I wrote all of those things down. The kind of person that I would choose to marry, how I would handle my career, how I would handle my finances. I really just wrote down a whole view and a whole map of how I would redo my life at 19 if I had the chance to be 19 again. And then I took on that map as though I was still 19. So I said, well, if I were 19 now, I would have, you know, a good 40 to 60 years ahead of me of living my life. But even though I am now 40 at at this time, so I'm not 40 anymore, I'm a little over 40 now. (laughs) Um, At that time I was 40 and I said, well, at 40, I still have close to another 40 to 50, maybe even 60 years ahead of me. So in the grand scheme of my life, even though I was 40 years old, every opportunity that I had at 19 was still available to me. I could still live that 50-year plan at 40. Totally available, totally an opportunity. And that's the way I thought. So all of my decisions when it came to starting over were done from the place of believing that every opportunity that was available to a 19-year-old was also available to me as a 40-year-old. And I planned my life that way. Yes, I knew I had kids and, you know, I had bills and things like that, but I just figured, yeah, that's just a little extra. Let's just say I'm a 19-year-old who's got a couple of kids, right? And that's the way I approached dating. That's the way I approached my career. I went back to work um, as an IT analyst, and then I transitioned into the career that I really wanted, which was to be a life coach. And I kind of took my time doing that. I was like, well, if we were, if I was 19, I would probably be working a job, maybe at a fast food restaurant or uh, as a server at a restaurant or something while I went to college and created the career I really wanted. And I'm like, I could just take that on as where I'm at. So I went to work <laughs> in IT, took that on as like my temporary, you know, career while I built the career I really wanted, which was life coaching. And so I want to offer you that view and that perspective of where you are today. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. You still have some time ahead of you. You might have some circumstances that you have to deal with. You might have some financial situations, but if you can reframe that in a way that gives you hope and motivation and determination, you can do so much more than you think you can. Recently, I was working with my coach and we were talking about kind of like the next 10 years. And I realized that I had achieved all of my initial goals for my post-divorce goals faster than I expected. And because of that, I hadn't taken the time to create new goals. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I want in the next 10 years. Cause I thought at, at, that at 45, I will be 45 in September of 2021. I thought that at 45, I would 
potentially just now be getting married, but I've been married now two plus years. I didn't realize that I would be working in the career of my dreams. I thought I'd still be working full time, maybe just st- starting to build my business. You know, so I, I knew my kids would be out of the home and they're both leaving for college this year. Like, I just didn't expect that I could achieve so much so quickly at that time. And now I realize that it is so much faster. It can be so much faster than you expect if you have the right way of looking at your situation. So I wanted to offer that to you. Become aware of which thoughts are creating the results that you currently have. If you're currently stuck, feeling low, attracting the wrong kind of men, being on a dating roller coaster, take some time to become aware of what those thoughts are so that you can change them. What is your overall perspective about your life and how is that fueling the results you want or not fueling the results you want? Like if you have a lot of resistance to getting back out there to date, you might have thoughts about how there are no good men left. I don't know how to choose a good man. I keep attracting toxic people. You might be running on the fuel of the thoughts that keep you stuck when it comes to dating. You want to uh, take some time to reflect and become aware of those thoughts. Explore the emotions that these thoughts are creating in your body. You might be creating feelings of hopelessness. You might be creating um, moods that are running on kind of like feeling like despair, low motivation. The thoughts that you're thinking are creating all of those result, all of those feelings. And because of that, you might find it hard to take action. You might feel a lot of resistance and that resistance will feel so real, right? Those thoughts will feel so real as though they were the truth of the universe. And this was true for everybody, or you might be using them against yourself thinking this is possible for everyone but me, which is like a really, really devastating thought to believe that you are the one person in the world who cannot have the results that she wants. You want to identify those thoughts and feelings and then do the work to shift into a higher thinking pattern that helps you leap into your goals so that you can successfully start over and create the life you want. And if you're already creating the life you want, working with your thoughts and feelings can accelerate the results that you're getting. So it doesn't take 10 years to create the business that you want. It doesn't create, it doesn't take 10 years to find the partner that you want. It can take a very short amount of time. You can change your thoughts and feelings so that you can create the courage and confidence you need to take action. Like, have you ever noticed some people are just able to like get out there, take action, get what they want. That type of courage and confidence comes from the thoughts that they're thinking and the feelings, the emotions that they are running on um, in their lives. So you want to learn the skill of shifting your thoughts, shifting your mood, shifting your feelings into thoughts and feelings that serve you. And you really want to learn to do this because no matter what your goal is, you will have some bumps along the way. Some things will happen that you won't, that won't be fun, whether it's in your finances or in your business or in your dating life. Some things are just going to happen that are going to be rough. You might have some failures along the way. But if you have that powerful thinking pattern, if you have that powerful perspective on your goals, you will have the fuel that you need to get up and try again all the way to success. So I want to invite you to work with me on shifting your thoughts and feelings and really creating an accelerated path to your goals in your business, in your uh, dating life, in starting over after a divorce. You know where you can find me. You can always uh, schedule a call with me at shadecurry.com or you can just send me an email and say, hey, I want to work with you. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. And before I sign off, I want to remind you to download the free PDF so that you can get started meeting people in the real world world today. It is summer. The weather is gorgeous. People are out and about. And I want to see you take that second chance that life is offering to you to create that relationship that you love, to create, to meet someone who truly sees you, who truly gets you, who truly wants to be on the same path with you who is compatible with you emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, right? So um, I want to invite you to download that PDF. You can click on the link in the show notes to get that. 
And I want to thank you for your time and attention. And I will see you next time.